Welcome to UCTV News. I'm Julia Gorman. And I'm Lindsay Kane. A fire in the Oaks on the Square in Store Center damaged several apartments and Grill 86 on Saturday. Five apartments and the restaurant sustained water damage from the sprinkler system. Craig Wack, the PR coordinator for the company that owns the Oaks, says residents should be back in their apartments within two to three days. Grill 86's website says the restaurant is currently closed and will undergo repairs immediately. UConn released two reports that detail its response to criminal activity, sexual assault, and other violence. Our own Grace Gagnon covered the story. The results of these reports reflect how students feel. Violent crime is down on campus, and after speaking with some of the students here, most say they feel safe. I've actually always felt safe, honestly, because I live on campus, like in my apartment, and I have to walk like pretty long through, like during the night, during the day, any time of the day. And I, I never had, I've never felt like in a way like where I don't feel safe. Some 24 sexual assaults were reported in the 2016 clergy report, which is 38 less than the previous year. Yukon police have specially trained officers to handle sexual assault cases. All officers are trained, but the Special Victims Unit received even additional training um, in these areas, which really help um, in connecting with uh, the survivors. Along with police, Yukon has campus security authorities and over 500 awareness and prevention campaigns. The best protectors of our communities are our community members, because our community members know who belongs and who doesn't belong. Uh, you know, they know what feels right and when something is kind of off. So we encourage everyone to report. How safe do students feel? Very. The report says 82% feel safe on campus, but some are still concerned. It's scary to think all the buildings here are unlocked throughout the day and like up till most of the night. And I know that the dorms, you can only swipe into your building, but you can so easily just be let into a building. When it comes to guns and gun use, Deputy Chief Maggie Silver says the police and fire department train together several times a year. For UCTV News, I'm Grace Gagnon. UConn police are requesting public commentary from students, faculty, and community members at a reaccreditation meeting, UConn Today reports. The forum will be held from 6 to 8 p.m. on Tuesday, October 31st in the Conover Auditorium. The event will allow Yukon police to apply for reaccreditation through the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Services. The commission evaluates the department's training, professionalism, and relationship with the community. The Phi Gamma Delta fraternity is carving pumpkins this Halloween to raise money for sick children. The event, Carving for Camp, charges students $5 for a pumpkin, carving tools, and a spot on the wall of pumpkins. All proceeds will benefit the Hole in the Wall Gang Camp, which allows kids with different illnesses to make friends with similar conditions. I think that's great in the spirit of Halloween, sort of take advantage of the pumpkins and then always helping out kids who are in need. I think that's excellent on the campus. No, the definitely. Fraternity. Sounds like a really fun activity. The former principal of Highcrest Elementary School pleaded guilty to two felony counts of voyeurism on Monday. Employees at the Hartford Walmart caught John Bean taking videos of young girls which led to his arrest. Police found several videos on his cell phone and laptop that included sexually explicit images of children. The 47-year-old man was still a principal in Weathersfield when the videos were taken. He faces up to two years in prison and 10 years probation. Connecticut kelp farmers are seeking permits to expand their businesses. According to the State Agency of Aquaculture, kelp farms will be expanding to Groton, Branford, Milford, and Norwalk. Brent Smith, a kelp farmer, said his industry could help bring jobs to the state. The farmer said they hope they can start their businesses before time runs out to plant their kelp. According to a recent Quinnipiac poll, about 50% of voters say Donald Trump is, quote, not fit to serve as president. Within the same poll, an all-time high percentage of voters consider the nation's current economy to be excellent or good. The study found that those in favor of Donald Trump were exclusively Republicans and white men without a college degree. Police in Norwich are currently searching for a man who broke into a home and stabbed a man late Saturday night. The suspect is 25-year-old Brandon Uzalko, who allegedly knew the victim. The victim, whose name has not been released, is dating Uzalko's ex-girlfriend. Uzalko, once caught, will be charged with attempted murder, home invasion, first-degree assault, and risk of injury to a minor. 
So it sort of sounds like a romantic situation gone astray. Yeah, definitely. I hope police are able to catch him. Next up, we move on to talk about events in the rest of the country. The National Weather Service issued high-risk fire weather watches across Southern California through Wednesday due to current triple-digit temperatures and hot, gusty winds. The statewide Fire Forestry Division said 5,000 firefighters were battling 10 deadly fires throughout the state as of Monday. At least 42 people have died and thousands of structures have been destroyed since the wildfires broke out north of San Francisco on October 8th. The father of a Texas toddler whose body was found on Sunday told police he watched the three-year-old choke on milk and die. After reporting the child as missing on October 7th, Wesley Matthews told police he sent his daughter to stand under a tree around 3 a.m. as punishment for not drinking her milk, and 15 minutes later, she was gone. Today, Matthews told police he physically assisted the child in drinking her milk until she choked and then removed her body from the home. A federal report released today advises President Donald Trump to take immediate action on climate change in order to avoid economic devastation. According to the Government Accountability Office, extreme weather and natural disasters have cost the nation $350 billion. The report states that avoiding the issue of climate change will cost the country billions more. It's estimated that if climate change is not addressed, there will be incre increased co coastal infrastructure damage and heat-related deaths in the southeast region by 2100. Earlier this month, four U.S. soldiers were attacked in Niger by what were believed to be terrorists. Joint Chiefs Chairman General Joseph Dunford said the troops were headed back to their base and did not ask for help for at least an hour. Families and friends of the soldiers are grieving as details still remain unclear. I know every day there's more and more details coming out about this attack, and I, I really just feel for those families. They're just looking for answers. Yeah, definitely a really sad story. The widow of a soldier killed in the Niger attack said President Trump told her that her husband, quote, knew what he signed up for. Trump denies saying these words, but the phone call has still turned into a controversy. Maisha Johnson said Trump could barely remember her late husband, Sergeant Law David Johnson's name, when he called her to offer his condolences. President Donald Trump said he is going to release classified government documents about the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. A statement from the White House says that Trump plans to release the documents because he believes the events should have full transparency. Trump must release the information by October 26, a deadline set by Congress. So again, another, another story about Trump in our newscast tonight, but I think very interesting on in this case about the John F. Kennedy investigation, because for us at least, that's so long ago, to yeah. have new details resurface is, is right. interesting. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see if he does release that information or not. That does it tonight here for us at UCTV News. Be sure to check out our Instagram at UCTV Channel 14 and tune in next Tuesday for another edition of UCTV News. Good night.